Welcome back to AM Northwest. Well, are you feeling frustrated with your job hunt or how your career change is going? Here's your ways that you may be sabotaging yourself. We welcome back strategic advisor and executive coach, Dr. Carol Parker Walsh. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good, so you must see a lot of clients sabotaging themselves. Yeah, and they really do it unbeknownst to themselves. Right. They don't really realize that it's a lot of their own behaviors is causing the problem. They think it's, well, I need to update my resume or right. I need to include something. Something's wrong with that. Or they go to all these external factors and it really could be them. So you say one of the problems that you're seeing people have is that they have unrealistic expectations. Yeah, that's the first thing. I mean, if you're if you're trying to shift your career, move into something different, or even just looking for something new, you have to have a realistic expectation of the time and the commitment of in terms of the process. And you really have to, you know, be ready to dedicate yourself to, you know, the long haul. It could take up to six months to nine months and in, in actually find something that's really right for you. Now, some people find them quick. And even in the past, if you found a job quickly, it doesn't mean that that's going to be the case every time, particularly if you're looking to move out of industry oh, yeah. or to shift into something completely new. It's going to take a minute. So you want to like buckle in for the long haul and really not think that, oh, well, as soon as I put my resume out there, everyone's going to be coming at me, giving me job offers. That is not the case. So you definitely want to normalize the fact that it's, you know, you're going to be in this for a minute. But then some people go the other direction and they really have negative self-talk. Yeah, that's the other thing. You you cannot personalize rejection and you really have to watch yourself talk during the process. You know, a lot of times, you know, people give up so early in the process because as I said, it takes a while. So yeah. they think, well, if nothing's hitting um, or if I'm getting a lot of rejections, then maybe it's me and there's something about me and that I should just give up. But that's not really the case. What you really want to work on, like, you know, it's going to be a while. So start by managing any kind of expectations that you have. If you get a rejection, don't take it personally. It just wasn't a good fit, possibly, or it probably wasn't the right opportunity for you to begin with, right? So you want to make sure that you're managing yourself through the process and that mind, that brain of yours, to make sure that this doesn't become something that becomes devastating to you, but you just realize that it's part of the process, right? And so you take the good with the bad. And so if you get a rejection letter, one of the good things I always recommend is that you just write back and say, I would love to get some feedback on why I wasn't chosen because it gives you some really good insight into maybe things that you can improve upon or things that you may want to talk about in the next interview or the next opportunity that may come your way. It seems like I've known so many people who've applied for the jo a job that they would be perfect at, but the person, the employer has already found somebody else or they already had somebody in mind, but they have to put it out there legally, right? I mean, they have to do that. Well, exactly. And, you know, honestly, 86% of positions are found through networking. Yeah. So most of the time they have a candidate in mind right. because they probably have talked to someone who's already worked there. Someone's given them some recommendations or they may have earmarked somebody internally that they would love to promote. But yes, they put it out there because a, they want to see maybe what is out there right. just to kind of, kind of assess the talent pool that's around them, but also because, you know, they want to make sure that there's good, um, they have a good pool of candidates to get the best possible one for the position. Should people apply for everything? No, and that actually is part of the reason why the first two points become problematic. Yeah. Because most people don't know what they want, so they just do the kind of spray and pray method where they oh, just yeah. send their resumes out to anything. And then what happens is it does impact that internal mindset and limiting belief because sure. then they start getting rejections and they think it's them when really you just didn't apply for the right job. So you really want to have clarity and think about it. If you apply for anything and you're not really confident confident in whether or not it's the job you want or a job you should get, you're not going to show up confidently in the interview. You're not going to be able to really understand what they're looking for. You're not going to be able to speak their language. You're not going to be able to, you know, use the vernacular that the organization is looking for so they know that you're the best fit for the position because you just applied for anything. So please do not do that. Take your time. And people think that they're hedging their best, right? That the more I apply to, the more chances um, I'll get to land a position. 
But think about it, if you land a position that you never really wanted to begin with, you're gonna set yourself up for failure and be right back in the process in another four or five or six months because you're gonna be unhappy, you're, there's not gonna be a good fit, you're not gonna be working at the level that you should be working at, you're not gonna be working in your strength, you're not gonna enjoy what you do. So if you apply for anything and you unfortunately land something, yeah. in the long run, you're gonna be setting yourself back as opposed to positioning yourself for success. We just have a very little bit of time left. I just want to get to, you don't have a plan. So you say you have to have a clear vision. Yeah, you want to have a clear vision. So first of all, you want to you want to value what you bring to the right. table. You want to make sure that you're focused on your skills and not your job titles. And you want to have a plan. You want to have a plan for networking. You want to have a strategy about what positions you're going to go after. You want to make sure that you're um, really up leveling how your, your communication skills and how you present the narrative of what you have to offer and bring to the table. You, uh, fundamentally, you got to feel confident and know what you bring to the table and make sure that you're applying for those positions that are the ones that you want so that you can show up confidently and be able to let them know that you're the right person for the position. Right, absolutely. All great tips. Thank you so much, Dr. Carol Parker-Walsh. Good to see you again. You too.